Hi, folks. <clears throat> I have not talked all day today. I didn't get a lot of sleep this week, or I got too much sleep, and I just didn't want to wake up. It's been it's been a long hell of a week for me, so I'm glad that the week is ending when I'm recording this. Um, this video is going to focus on the lack of empathy for people that are trying to find a cure for um, pervasive developmental disorders because I guess the word autism I rather um, um, not use because it means so differently than it has been in years past but um, I wanted to uh, use an example here because um, I was thinking about this uh, recently but um, a former meteorologist in the Boston TV market. Um, her name was Mish Michaels, and she worked, uh, started her career at WMUR TV in early 1992. And within like six months, she's already made her way to Boston to Channel 7. Then later went to 4. And then um, by the end of the, the 2000s, she left the, the business. And it turned out that she was kind of this dark person um and I, i've written about mish michaels on my my website um on the mini fake news guy um news gathering platform that i do outside of this stuff because i i can't talk about this all the time or i'm gonna go crazy but after she left uh wbc tv i think it was in i think it was 09 or something i can't even remember now um she started getting into really dark advocacy, um, denying climate change was one of her passions. <laughs> um, I have thoughts on that one. And also um, the rise of autism amongst little kids. I'm not, I wasn't a kid anymore and I'm apparently not relevant. Um, so, so you kind of get, you can kind of figure out if she's anti-climate change and anti-vaxxers, uh, you can kind of um, get um, a feel of who she really is as a person. Um, I said was because she had died last year. Um, she was 52, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the, re the reports of her death is it, it sketchy. And I, um, it could have been self-deletion. That was from one source, but I didn't officially go with it myself because I have high journalistic standards, even though I'm not a journalist. I'm the first to admit that. But um, but I, I really, I took it very personal and I've written about it on the site so you can check it out um, in your own, in your own um, time. Um, one other thing, her name is not really Mish Michaels. Um, it, according to the then news director, Jack Heath at WMUR TV, her name was a little too hard, so he thought, for the New Hampshire audience. So he, he tried to Americanize her um, Indian um, name. She's, um, uh, I forget her, her nationality offhand, but yeah, he, he, he wanted to Americanize it. And, um, Jack Heath was, you know, he's the worst of the, the two. He's, he's a fucking xenophobe. I'm going to leave it at that. But here's the point of what some of the rhetoric Michaels had said as she was an activist for the anti-vaxxers. And one of them was, um, that um, and I don't remember where I found it on the web. I, I have to dig for it. I think it might have been a discussed comment that was copy and pasted from another site. But there was a governor a mass in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. There was a committee on autism, and some. So she publicly testified, and one of the things that really triggered me was the costly burden. Um, I don't remember the entire sentence or the entire context, but I do remember those three or two phrases being used in the same breath. So given that Michaels was very um, anti-climate um, um, anti change and anti-autism or anti-vaxxers, the, the thing that... Um, that, that that gets missing is again the the this whole idea of um the the lack of empathy for people with pervasive developmental disorders people that have been diagnosed in um the dsm-4 or um 
or prior to because I think yes I, I keep focusing on pre DSM five because those diagnoses had brought either traumatic um, outcomes or what. The reason why I think, again, this is anecdotal information, but the reason why autism was such a costly burden was because you, um, you, um, you, you treat everybody the same. They're all high risk and low functioning. Well, they, they're, they're going to cost a lot of money and resources in the school systems and possibly adult services. So if you do a one size fits all on a disorder that is clearly not a cut and dry cookie cutter disorder. I mean, if you're around a lot of vaccine injured children, um, I guess that they're all the same, but it really isn't. And again, we're not talking about DSM-5 and people that are, you know, are in their early 20s. We're talking about people my age. And that is where I get really, like, insulted with, um, with them and with their, this kind of rhetoric that she did. I, I think what Ms. Michaels did was, was very un, unhealthy for many um, people um, in Massachusetts and, and even kids that didn't even live in Massachusetts and went in the school out of district programs and stuff like that. Um, her, her, her impacts against the autism community is where I have the deepest um, the deepest um, animosity to, I think, um, to write people off and assume they're, they're mute and dumb in the, the new millennia, especially in 2011, there was enough information to kind of say that this, this is, you know, um, th this is, it's, it's bullshit, basically. Um, here's where I think where a lot of activists or advocates miss and what's happening is millions of people on the spectrum are getting screwed over when someone is literally sick physically whether it's even even a disease like a cancer or something like that there's all this um, empathy for what can we do to help this person oh my god you're not feeling good let me help you let me do anything or even with physical disabilities for that matter but the reason why I use the the, the, the illness part is there's always the, the solution isn't the problem it's helping and caring for them in the moment with an intent that there might be a cure or treatment or something like that along the way there's always help for the here and now if someone is physically ill or or, or visibly ill or physically disabled there's always this empathy for the here and now but anyone who has an invisible disability um never gets that it's always okay this person is uh according to dsm-4 um or dsm-5 you know he's not diagnosed has this this and that we must treat him this way because this is there's like an uh, the dsm for whatever reason became an algorithmic process where if you have these preset um pre-existing conditions there was an apparent solution that was supposed to work for everybody it didn't work for someone like me. And as a result, we, um, again, continue to pathologize. We try to find that cure, that fix, because we think logically, you know, okay, this person is so, is ruining the family. He's chewing up the furniture. Oh, my God, it's the end of the world. We must find a solution. And instead, the lack of empathy by the parents, because the parents, most of them that... The, their, their autistic childs at their mid-20s felt very much like inconvenience severely and so as a result they think their kid is stupid and so as a result they're mute and stupid they they can't you know they, they can't do anything right so by not having any love for the child that they want to like drive off the George Washington Bridge um, you know, that, that to me, that kind of rhetoric equates to actions of lacking, of trying to help this child one day at a time. You'll get better. You may not be like a normal child, but at least you will have something to live for. 
And I find that a lot of the, the deaths of nonverbal or lower functioning autistics um, could very well be self-deletion. And we just assume, oh, the cute little boy just uh, doesn't know his risk or safety. I mean, how do you know? You're not in his or her brain. Um, and again, I'm not in their brain either, so I can't make a, a, a judgment either. But I, I would certainly not rule out that, oh, they, they don't know anything. And um, maybe they are running towards their end of their lives. Who knows? It's hard to tell. Um, but you need to have people. I think what I'm looking for to be a little selfish is someone that can understand me and help me live life to the best of my ability instead of being treated like a stereotypical asshole that can, that's ruining everybody's day when they can't get their shit together, i.e. the support staff. Um, and so um, as a result, when you have people that um, don't fit in, it becomes even more of an expense. I mean. The real cost of autism is there's no, it's priceless because each individual is different and each funding unit has a different approach. By making everything so uniform, it actually puts more of the strain on the public taxpayers longer term because you're treating everybody the same and in fact as a result, I would even argue that if you treat everybody the same with the same price tag, you're still not, you, there could be another student or even an individual that is not getting enough resources and they're getting the same amount of funding, but they're too busy take, taking care of somebody else. It's, it's very unfortunate. And like I said, the anti-vaxxers, anti-autism types have caused unrehensible damage to these individuals you know I feel for these people I can't speak for them I don't know them but I can't say that they're completely stupid and they need they're intellectually dumb and they, they need you know yeah they may need support but they're not vegetables and when you had a meteorologist that worked in the Boston market for more than a decade and built a lot of credibility to only piss it for political activism, I think that was her legacy. And unfortunately, um, that's what her legacy was. And um, I watched her. I watched her grow. I also saw her regress. I saw her writing off the market. The pe cause People on the autism spectrum w are interested in whether and watch the news too. And if you want us to be, if you're degrading us as um, a leech to the public taxpayers or shit like that, um, don't don't be alarmed when you have one angry viewer that pissed on your death, um, because. Um, you, 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 you know, you wouldn't do this to any other human types of humans on this planet, but you did it to the, to the, the most sacred people that are probably watching you or have watched you. It's like, that is like the oxymoron of this. And, um, and again, it shows a complete apathy to the individual because you're not helping them now. You just want to cure them. You don't want to prevent future cases, but you're not taking care of the thousands upon thousands of tens of thousands of people in the Commonwealth and the other five states in New England that are suffering with the same thing. And I'm suffering because no one did anything to help my group. I had to figure this out all on my own with little resources. I came to age when wrongplanet.net came along and um, the anti-vaxxers were coming along. It was like, literally like, it was boot camp for me. It still is boot camp. And we all talk about the 30-somethings that have been diagnosed under the pre-DSM-5 and just are hobbling on society and we're a, you know, a burden to taxpayers because you've, you're not making it, you're not funding or you're not providing services to meet the needs because it doesn't meet the right um, money standards. It's, 
it's sad. It's really, really sad. In another video, I'll talk about the adult services system and how they may make off on your money if you are given a certain amount of funds on an annual basis that maybe not all those funds really go to you or for what your, your needs are. Um, I'm in an interesting program where it's kind of customized, but um, it's only customized to the funds, not to where it goes. It really sucks. So, um, in some regards. So, I'm probably going to do a video on that um, soon. And um, that's all I wanted to say. I wanted. I. I. I, I hope that this video. I hope that the, that my goal for the rest of my thirties is to get as many people aware about the condition that is DSM five and pre DSM five and um and get people to understand that there is even if you're higher functioning you have pre you have profound deficits that some of it is legit some of it's um literally the condition some of it was woman made and um it makes it makes my life really difficult so thank you for watching bye